we ended the previous module with this formula which is called the general dividend discount model it's saying that the value of a share is the present value of all future dividends plus the present value of the price that you receive when you sell the share however as we know shares are assumed to last forever and therefore the dividend discount model really looks like this since every time the share is sold it's worth at that time the present value of all future dividends plus the price that you receive when you sell the share if you continue that indefinitely then it boils down to the fact that the present value of a share is the present value of an infinite stream of dividends we can represent that using this formula this character is the Greek letter Sigma which stands for the sum of therefore this formula is saying that the value of a share at time zero is the sum where t takes on all values from 1 to infinity of the dividend in year t discounted to a present value by dividing by the interest rate factor to the power t that's still not a formula that we can actually put into practice we cannot literally calculate the present value of an infinite stream of dividends by discounting them all one by one so we need a shortcut and we'll obtain that shortcut by making some sort of assumption about the future behavior of dividends there are three such assumptions that we can make number one dividends will remain constant number two dividends will grow at a constant growth rate or number three after a period of time dividends will then grow at a constant growth rate we will use the first of these assumptions in calculating the value of a preference share that's because the dividends you receive from a preference share constitute a perpetuity the same cash flow repeated every period forever this is essentially the formula for the present value of a perpetuity we've changed the variable somewhat so that the formula specifically applies to the value of a preference share p0 is the price of the share today div is the constant dividend and re is the equity cost of capital or the required rate of return in the topic on financial mathematics there was a module called frequency of compounding and we noted there that the r and the n in any time value of money formula reflects periods not years and that's the case here these numbers on the number line represent payment periods not necessarily years so we need to make sure that we have the dividend that's payable every period and the equity cost of capital that applies to one of those periods